Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today we have another episode of Speed Reviews. This is a video that basically after I've tested a batch of products, I come back to give you my final thoughts on them because first impressions are all well and good, but I feel like these videos are even more important because sometimes I need to test a product in different ways with different applications, with different tools, etc., for me to get like my final thoughts. So I have my final thoughts on these products and I do not include eyeshadow palettes in this video, I do a palette ranking separately that I did actually upload last week. I will link it down below in the description box if you missed it. Let's get to it. I will link everything I can down below in the description box and as well as everything that is on my face. And if you like these types of videos, give this video a thumbs up. That helps me to know. How I work this video is I arrange the products into four major categories so that you can get a bigger overview and it helps me just organize my thoughts. So the first category is yes, yes, yes. These are products that I really like. Things that I seem to be reaching for a lot. Things that are just like at the top of my list. The next category is good, but not great. These are things that are good, but not great. Obviously. Duh. These are products that I would recommend. Maybe there's just like one or two caveats that makes it not perfect for me or for just some reason, there's just not that something that's making me very excited. The third category is meh. These are products that I don't think are awful. I don't think that they're trash. I'm not throwing them away, but I won't repurchase them and they might be better for someone else with different preferences. And then the last category is it's gonna be a no for me, dog. It's definitely a no for me, dog. The voice is just not. These are products that I absolutely do not recommend. Things that I think are bad, okay? But you know what? It's all subjective because even if you think they're really good, we can have different opinions. That is okay. But these are products that I personally, I'm not feeling it. And of course, as I'm going through these products, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments give it to me. Okay. I want to know. And just a couple things about me before we get to the products. I have a lot of products. Okay. It's going to be a long video is I am 37 years old. I have very oily acne prone skin. I like a matte finish with both my concealers and my foundations. I love eyeshadows. I know we're not getting into eyeshadows, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. And I am typically a light to light medium neutral olive slash yellow. I can, I can go yellow. I can go olive for my foundations. So we're going to start off with the top category, which is yes, yes, yes. This category has the most amount of products. We love that. We love that. I love buying products that I like. So the first product I want to talk about is the milk makeup infinity long wear eyeliner. This is in the shade outer space. It's just a black eyeliner. I did receive this in PR from the brand. And honestly, I think this is a great eyeliner. I really enjoy, I didn't wear an eyeliner in my waterline today. I don't think black is going to go with this, so we won't do that. But anyway, it's a little late in the day. Okay. I'm a little scattered. This is a pencil eyeliner. I really like it. I think it does the job well. I've been reaching for it when I want to wear a black and it reminds me of the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner, which are my favorite liners. This isn't too creamy, but it's not dry. It's just right in the middle, a really nice consistency. There's a lot of product. I mean, it just does what it's supposed to do. And I really like having it in my collection. I love a dark liner in the waterline. I've really been enjoying that. I really like reaching for this when I want a black. I don't have any complaints about it. The next product I want to talk about is the Kaja Wink Dazzle Eyeshadow and Glitter Multi Stick. I have been loving this. Now, I will say, I did get in PR all of the shades that they offer, and I've only used two. And there's only one in particular that I'm mentioning in this speed reviews because this is the one that I've been reaching for all the time. This is in the shade Ice Illusion. So it's a double ended product. One side is a shadow stick. And in particular, this one is a metallic. And then on the other side, we have a little sponge tip thing. And when I first saw this, I was like, this looks gimmicky. This looks kind of ridiculous. I have been loving reaching for this in particular when I want an inner corner highlight. Let me kind of go over what I've already got going so I can show it to you. So first, I, I mean, I do already have um, an eyeshadow in there, but wait, just wait, okay? You're gonna see how much it pops. So I'm gonna 
first put down the shadow stick. And I've been leaving this in my top drawer for those times where I'm using a palette and it doesn't have an inner corner highlight that I personally want to use and I want a shimmery inner corner highlight. I'm reaching for this, but wait, there's more. When you use the sponge tip with the glitter, look how much it pops. <gasps> you see that? Before, after. I think it is such a beautiful inner corner highlight, super easy, literally just to reach from my top drawer, pop it in the inner corner, good to go. And I've been reaching for this a lot. Now, like I said, I did get other shades, I haven't tried the other shades that much. I don't honestly, I don't really want to use them because I don't really feel like I'm gonna use all of them. So I'd rather just not touch them and give them away. But I will say this one, Ice Illusion in particular, I've been getting a lot of use out of. Next up, I wanna talk about the Unearthly Cosmetics Lip Mask. Uh, Unearthly Cosmetics is my favorite brand. They, like at least top three, I really enjoy their products. And I have made it my mission to try every single thing that they offer. And so I purchased this lip mask. It looks like just your standard chapstick. It has a little bit more weight to it and it is a clear, just like lip balm. It smells really good. It's got like a coconutty fruity scent. It smells really, really good. And it is clear. It is definitely a very nourishing, thick coating lip mask. I've really been enjoying this, leaving it in my drawer while I'm doing my makeup. I put this on and then I wipe it off afterwards. I should leave this by my bed. I bet this would be really nice for overnight. It's a lip balm that's really nice. It feels nice on the lips, it smells nice. I can't really ask for more than that. And it's coming from one of my favorite brands. I've really been enjoying it. Okay, this product has some kind of chokehold on me. I'm not gonna lie. It is the NYX, the Marshmallow Setting Spray. I am not a setting spray person. I rarely used, before this product, I rarely used to wear setting sprays. The times that I would reach for it would be more when I've over powdered my face and I need a little moisture. Like I said, I am oily, but I don't feel many setting sprays, at least that I use, elongate the wear of my makeup that much that I wanna reach for one or I even think to reach for one. I do really like the Urban Decay All Nighter for when I'm, like I'm a professional dancer, so anytime I have competition or something, I'll use Urban Decay. I don't know if this makes my makeup last longer, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, but I, what I will say is I've been enjoying this just for the sake of if I've over powdered, but I've been really enjoying this because the smell, the smell is so good. And every single time I spray this, like there's probably, I probably use half of this, okay? For me, that's a lot. Every time I use this, I say out loud, oh my gosh, that smells so good. Now granted, I am an only child, okay? So I talk to myself a lot, have always talked to myself a lot, but I still get surprised by how beautiful this smells. It smells so sweet, just like sweet and yummy and like, oh, like marshmallows. <laughs> and the mist is perfect. It's fine enough that it's not leaving big droplets on my face, but it's not too fine that it feels like I didn't spray anything on my face. You know what I mean? So I've really been enjoying this a lot. The experience is great. Something else that I've really loved is the Unearthly Cosmetics Dreamer Highlighting Trio. This is from their holiday collection from last year. And in, in it, we have three different highlighters. I really like all three of these highlighters. I love the formula of this. It is that wet looking kind of just skin-like finish. It's not overly sparkly. It's not overly textured. I think these are absolutely beautiful. And Unearthly Cosmetics does have a few different highlighters that they offer. This one is, I think the most like, I don't wanna say wearable, but it's the closest to most mainstream highlighters that you see on the market. If you don't like an overly sparkly highlighter, if you don't like a multi-chrome highlighter, I like sparkly highlighters. I like shifty highlighters, but I also like these as well. It just depends on the day. It depends on the moment. But these are just ultra smooth on the face. I can wear all three of these because they have more of that transparent base. And I think it will stretch across many skin tones. The one over here called Days, even though it is that still smooth look, it does have like a little bit of like a pinky shift. Oh, it's really, really beautiful. I've been reaching for this a lot. Something that I am very pleasantly surprised by is the Flower Beauty Ultra Light Liquid Blush. I have mine in the shade Peachy. 
And I have tried the contour and the highlighter from this brand in the same packaging, and I didn't like either of them. I thought the highlighter looked like a liquid eyeshadow. It was so metallic, so stripy. The contour, the color that I got was really off. It was very, very, very gray, and I just didn't find it was easy to blend. But I actually feel like this formula, they finally nailed it. I think that this is the right amount of pigment. Sometimes with liquid blushes, I find that they're on both sides of the spectrum, either way too pigmented or really, really sheer and really, really almost sticky looking on the cheeks. I feel like this is the right amount of pigment where it's easy to control. You are able to build it up and it looks really pretty. I love this peachy color. It does give a slight like glow to the cheeks without looking greasy. Again, I have oily skin. And I, I like when a liquid blush has a little bit of glow to it. I quite like that. This is really like a very, very good formula. And it does have this sponge tip applicator. And when I first used this, I put it on the back of my hand and then went from the back of my hand onto my cheek. I actually feel like I didn't get enough pigment when I did that. So if you like a very sheer application, I would go onto the hand first and then take your brush and go on or your sponge and then go onto your hand and go onto the cheeks. But I actually feel comfortable, hardly ever do I say this. I feel comfortable dotting this on my cheeks and then blending it out. I, I don't feel like it's overly pigmented when I do that. So I really recommend this. Another product from Flower Beauty that I've really been enjoying is the Gloss, this is a really hard name to say, Gloss Crush Lip Serum. And I have mine in the shade Honey Crush. It's just a pinky nude. The formula of this is really nice. And honestly, I love how it looks on the lips. It's very glossy, very shiny, very cushiony. It has like a fat daddy Dovid applicator that has a hole in it. So you really only need to dip in once and you get the full shebang with it. It has a very, very, very light fruity scent, not overwhelming, but I do like when my glosses have a slight scent to them. It just makes it more pleasant than like a gloss, like lip gloss standard chemically smell, you know what I'm saying? So all around, I love how this looks on the lips. It feels very comfortable. I like the application. I like the color. Again, no complaints. It's doing what I want it to do. I've really, really been enjoying the Natasha Denona Berry Pop Cheek Trio. It is one of her face trios. I have the My Dream Cheek Trio and it is one of my favorite cheek products in my collection. I just love all three products in it. And so I was very excited about this. I had very high hopes and I've really been enjoying this as well. This is a cream blush, but it's a cream blush that has a powdery finish. So again, for me with oily skin, it's not greasy on my cheeks. It's not sticky. It kind of dries down to a powdery finish. And even though it is kind of intimidating looking in the pan for my skin tone, I felt that I was able to control the pigment level on this. Now, of course it is a berry blush, so I am going to get a very blushy look with it, but I actually don't mind that. I quite like a blushy look. This cream product is probably my least favorite product in the trio, but I still really like it. You can use this on its own as a cream blush that has a little more glow to it, but I've also been layering this underneath the powder highlighter and the powder highlighter is beautiful. I love Natasha Denona highlighter formula. It's very wet looking, not chunky, not sparkly, just really gorgeous like glow from within. And using all three of these products together, has really been beautiful. Another product that I've really been enjoying is the ColourPop Blush Sticks. I have mine in the shade 25.8. Now, by the way, some of these products aren't new products. They're just new to me, okay? So this is not a new product. I've never owned one before. I went to Angelica Neekvist's house at the end of January and she let me go through some stuff that she was passing on, decluttering. She just has a lot of makeup. The girl has a lot of makeup. She gets a lot of makeup in PR. And this was one of the products that she was getting rid of and I wanted to try it out. And honestly, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful blush. It is definitely more on the buildable side. I do not draw this straight onto my face. I go in with my brush directly from the stick onto the brush and then stipple it on my cheeks. And it's very buildable. It gives a really pretty, I would say slightly glowy finish on the cheeks. I really like this color. Again, it's doing everything that I want it to do. It's really, really easy to apply, which I've really been enjoying. We got more blushes. 
Okay, listen, I somehow acquired so many blushes lately. I have the Betty Boop Blush Duo from Glamlight. This is by far my favorite blush duo that they've done. My favorite. I feel like a lot of the times their blushes, their powder blushes are very, very, very pigmented. Even when I use a very light hand, it is hard for me to control the pigment. This one is definitely more on that buildable side. It is just really easy to use, true matte blushes. So when I want a matte cheek, this is what I'm going for. We have two pinks that lean a little bit more neutral to warm. I love the shades. I love the embossings in the pan. I love the packaging. Everything about this, I, I love. I don't have any complaints on it. It's definitely my favorite Glam Light blush. Another blush that I've been loving is the REM Beauty Satin Matte Blush in the shade Peach Planet. This is my first product from the brand. I also bought their bronzer, but it, the shade is not right for me. So I only used it once in my testing new makeup video and I'm gonna pass it on because it is way too light for me. But the blush I've been loving. It is just, again, a beautiful peachy blush. I tend to pick up peachy blushes a lot. I really love peachy blushes. And this is a very interesting formula. It is quite powdery, like it's not very thin. There is a thickness to it, but when I put this on my cheeks, it blends seamlessly. It adds almost like a soft focus finish, almost like a blurring effect to the cheeks. Because it is that kind of thicker powder, it's almost like a finishing powder type of feeling. I don't know if that makes any sense or like a pressed powder feeling where I am getting that more blown out look. It's honestly so beautiful. Now it's called Satin Matte. I don't really see much satinness to it. I do feel that it's quite matte at least on me, uh, and at least this shade, maybe other shades have a little more satin to them, but really, really beautiful. Really, I'm impressed. Another favorite thing for me this month, and this is not a new formula, but they're new products and new colors, so I thought I would mention them, are the new Odin's Eye lip products. I don't know, I have all of them here, hold on. A few moments later. Odin's Eye did a, another collaboration with three creators that they've done in the past. The legendary Diversa collection that was in collaboration with Tina from the Fancy Face, Annette's Makeup Corner, and Judy. And they all created a palette as well as three lip products each. All of them were glosses except for one was a matte lip. I really enjoy all of these lip products. I really enjoy Odin's Eyes gloss formula. I think it's a really, really nice formula. I am currently wearing, which one am I wearing? I'm wearing the shade Creativity in the Glow formula from Tina. It is just like a kind of a warm nude on me. The glosses are very, very comfortable. The Glow formula is a little bit more of a transparent base with very small glitter particles. And the Shine formula is definitely a pigmented gloss. Like they're pretty pigmented. I would say my favorite of the Shine glosses is Annette's in the shade Snake Kiss. It is just a gorgeous like reddish brown Oh, it is so beautiful, so beautiful. Their matte lipstick is nice. I, I don't love a matte liquid lipstick, but I will say for a matte liquid lipstick, it is more on the velvety side. So it's not like ultra drying or anything, but yeah, I've, I've been reaching for these, particularly the glosses a lot. And I would say my favorite product that I've tried over the past month or so that I honestly have been reaching for it five out of seven days a week is the Smashbox Halo Glow and Sculpt Face Palette. I am obsessed with this. And I don't say that lightly because I don't love to say the word obsessed unless I'm really obsessed, but I have not stopped reaching for this since I got it. I love all four products in this. I use all four products in this. I'm wearing all four of these on my face today. So we have this bronzer here. The bronzer is in the shade beach day it says contour but i think this is a bronzer on me it's a beautiful neutral colored bronzer which is my preference for a bronzer it's buildable it's skin like it's not thick it's not powdery and it doesn't pr distribute too much pigment at once it is like that sheer buildable just gorgeous formula it's a satin formula so it's not like dry chalky looking but it's not glittery either both of these blushes are beautiful. I love to mix them, which is what I did on the face today. Again, more of a satin formula. They give a healthy glow without looking chunky or glittery. Again, on my acne prone skin, I think it looks really nice. And then this highlighter, I was kind of disappointed because it's 
champagne pop, <laughs> which I already own, but I don't mind it because I like everything else in this palette. I will travel with this and I will use champagne pop because I love champagne pop and it's nice for it to be in a palette all ready to go, if that makes sense. So champagne pop, if you've never used it before, is a very, very shiny highlighter, but it's not glittery or chunky. It's just very blingy, but all four of these products I've been loving. I'm not a huge fan of the packaging, if I'm gonna be honest with you. I did buy this myself, but then Smashbox sent me one <laughs> and another one in a different colorway like two months later. So unfortunately I have two, I mean, I'll put it in giveaway and I might try out the other colorway as well. But honestly, if you've been thinking about this and you like all of the descriptions that I just said, you would not be disappointed. I've been reaching for this so, so much. All right, now we're gonna go to the good but not great category. So I have a handful of things to talk about. The first one is the Sigma Spectrum Color Correcting Duo in Light to Medium. This is another product that I got from Anielka Neekfist. And if you've been here before, you know, I wear a color corrector on my under eyes every single day. I have very dark under eyes, always have, probably always will. And so I love testing out different color correctors. For me with oily skin, this is a little more emollient than I like. But for the winter time, I have been enjoying this, but I will tell you once it becomes summer, I feel like my concealer is gonna slip and slide on top of this. But if you have dry skin, if you have even normal skin, if you like more of an emollient color corrector, you probably would like this. This is very, very, very reminiscent of the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector, the one that's sold now by Smashbox. It's honestly the same product in my opinion, uh, but it's nice that they offer two different shades in one palette because as my skin tone gets darker with the summertime, I do switch to a slightly deeper product, but I, I prefer for the summertime the e.l.f. camo color corrector that is a little bit more darker peach and it's a little bit more like satin matte. Again, if you like more of an emollient type of feeling in your color correctors. This is a really good one. It's just not like blowing me away. Also from the Dreamer box, the Dreamer collection from Unearthly Cosmetics, they released bullet lipsticks. So I was so excited when I saw that they were releasing bullet lipsticks. Again, Unearthly is one of my favorite brands. I love the colors. I love the colors. And when I first saw these colors, I was kind of like, mm, Am I really gonna reach for these? They're all pretty cool toned. Some of them are a little bit more vampy and I'm just like a warm toned nude lover. Yeah, there's like this deep purple. There's this more like very cool toned brown. And I found myself reaching for these, wearing them and feeling like really good in them. There's nothing like a vampy lip, you know what I'm saying? So all that to say, I actually really enjoy the colors a lot more than I thought I was going to. I really like the formula on these. They're very opaque, very creamy. They are a cream lipstick. So they're not like a matte lipstick, but they're not a shiny lipstick. They're a cream, very glidey, one swipe pigment. They're really, really beautiful, beautiful formula. But the only thing about this that I don't like is the smell, okay? This smells like a gin and tonic to me straight up like a gin and tonic. Amanda, can you tell me if, like what the smell is supposed to be? Because I'm smelling gin and tonic, okay? That's the only downside. I just don't like the smell. It, it, it just, yeah, I just don't like the smell, unfortunately. But everything else about them, I like. All right, next up I wanna talk about the Fantasy Cosmetica Celestial Lights face palette. So this is the first time that Fantasy Cosmetica is doing highlighters. And I love that every time they're doing a new collection, they're adding some new stuff. Like, I love it. I love when they're changing it up, trying new things. The brand itself is amazing. Their eyeshadows are incredible. And so I was excited to try this out. I like this face palette. It's just not my ultimate favorite. Uh, I do feel like the colors are just a little bit not in my preference. Like they're not my number one preference, let's put it that way. And they don't have a super transparent base. So when you use the purple one, you are seeing a little bit of a purple, a little bit of a purple cast, a little bit of a pink cast. I will say this one, this first one called Dancing Lights, I like the most. It is the most like smooth, but just in terms of like base color, they do have a little bit of a base color, a little more than I would prefer in my perfect highlighter. But listen, not everything has to be perfect for me. And if you like 
a colorful highlighter that has that little bit of base that you could actually like layer over your blush or you could probably even use these as blush depending on your skin tone um i've been enjoying these a lot i did receive this whole collection in pr which i'm very thankful for and they do amazing things i can't wait to see what else they do next so now i want to mention the ColourPop pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer this is not a new product but ColourPop did reach out to me uh, about a month or two ago and they asked me to pick out my shade in a few different complexion products and this was one of the ones that was offered so I said sure I'll try it I've always been curious about it so I got mine in the shade light 7w I am wearing it on my face today the shade match is great it's great actually in the bottle it looks kind of orange and it looks a little dark but on my face it works great but I will say this is a very light coverage so I think that's why it works it's gonna work for somebody a little bit deeper than me, somebody a little bit lighter than me. It's kind of flexible because of the light coverage. And this is just not in my super preference. It is quite glowy, like I do have to powder this or I'm very shiny right away. And I have a lot of acne, I have a lot of discoloration on my face. So I don't love, love, love a light coverage product. It's just not in my preference. But I will say I've really been enjoying this mixing this into my more medium to full coverage foundations when I want just slightly less coverage from those products. If I want slightly more hydration to those products, especially with the winter time where my skin is kind of leaning oily to normal if it's cold out. I mean, I live in Florida, okay? It's not that cold, but you get what I'm saying, right? When it's not super humid outside and I want a little moisture on my face, I wanna add a little bit more of that natural look to my foundation. I put in a pump of this and it works great. So that's how I've been using it as a mix-in. I will continue to use it as a mix-in. And actually my skin, knock on wood, my skin has been pretty good lately. I haven't had any major breakouts, okay? So today, actually, I think it looks pretty good. I didn't have too much to cover up today. It's a good product. It's just not my favorite. All right, and now we're gonna go to the meh category. I have only one product to talk about, and this is the Revolution golden gal i forget what this is exactly called it's not written on here but of course i will pop it up on the screen i love the packaging like this clear acrylic packaging i think is really cute and i saw this on ulta's website i was very very interested to check it out and i will say it's fine it's a baked highlighter but it's a little bit dry it's a little bit kind of chalky looking on the face i definitely prefer to spray my face with a setting spray and then put this down just so there's something for it to stick to but i would say overall it's not like my ultimate favorite highlight i don't think it's bad but it's just a little dry for me it's not sparkly because like i said i like a sparkly highlighter it almost looks kind of like a metallic eyeshadow that's not that shiny if that makes sense so it's fine i'll use it i'm not going to declutter it right away but would i recommend this i mean not necessarily <laughs> but i don't think it's horrible and listen i have some great news i don't have anything to put in the it's gonna be a no from a dog category. How cool is that? I didn't try anything this month that was like absolutely not, this product sucks, it's awful. Listen, I love that for me. All right, and that is it for this speed reviews video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on anything I talked about today. Have you also tried these products? Are some of them your favorites? Do you not like some of them? Let me know your thoughts down below because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.